Welcome back to our continuing coverage of the 2015 Midseason Invitational, where AHQ Esports Club are about to face off against SK Telecom T1. This is the story of first place here. If AHQ wins, they will be drawn into a three-way tie for first, and we will have bonus games. Bonus games. As Zyrene puts it, if SKT wins, they will hold first place uncontested here and we have to make note that in this game easy hoon will be playing for skt so how does that affect this matchup well we saw easy hoon take a more of a passive approach to the laning as we've all as we've known coming with the champion pool not necessarily champions that can kill in lane of vladimir just trying to farm up and how does west door pair up against people that aren't necessarily going to punish him and try to kill him well he roams and I think that's what we're going to see in this game. Is it going to be effective? Perhaps not so much because when they have Easy Hoon, Bengi tends to focus on the side lanes. So it probably will end in a game where there's four to five men on the bottom side in the jungle. And it's going to be all about the rec side. AHQ has first pick. I think SKT should ban this away. Yeah, I want to see what West Westor can do up against Easy Hoon because Faker, you know, he's the god of death. He gets so many kills in lane, and I was calling Easy Hoon the immortal, but it came to me, and he's the god of life. He's the opposite of Faker here. <laughs> that guy just doesn't die. He's played 17 games and he's died 18 times. He averages just over, like literally, like 1.09 deaths per game. He has so many deathless games, and this season he's only had one game where he's had more than two deaths. He does not die in lane. And if Westor is looking for some type of advantage, like you said, he has to go elsewhere. But Bengi's going to be a problem for him. Also, Marin in the top lane has been having a really good tournament. The last time, like up against Fnatic, it's the only time we saw him exploited with roams from the top laner. So I want to see a lot of roaming from AHQ, and that's how they're going to get on top of this. Yeah, I definitely think that the way I describe Easy Hoon, if we're just going to go through all the metaphors, is a brick wall. <laughs> they just throw up the brick wall. He's the okay. god of brick walls. Yeah. Yeah. Come, but, gentlemen. But in all honesty, the reason that I like it is because they already have a split pusher in Myron, and that's who's going to go up against Westor. So I think they have a fairly good response against Westor during the mid game. I think a lot of pressure also is on Bang. He needs to respond correctly. If the Rek'Sai does get taken away, what does he default to? Because we've seen that Mountain, he relies on Rek'Sai a little bit, but has the Jarvan, which fills a niche role that I was very against. And then he, the style that he camps in, I've actually kind of grown to appreciate exactly what he's trying to get done in the early game. All right, well, let's, let's do what you said. Let's continue it anyway. I want to throw this question out to the fans at home. How do you describe Easy Who and send your answers to at Lolly Sports and use the hashtag MSI2015? I'm really curious to see what we get. But coming back to this game, uh, AHQ here again, we did not expect them to be at the top of the table coming into this tournament, but this is not, in, this is not unfamiliar territory for them. They were not expected to have done well in their own region. They've now made it here. They've proven everyone wrong. There's one team left to beat, though, SKT at the top of the table. How do they do that specifically? Well, they also have to beat EDG again. Yes, but they're here. <laughs> the, the undefeated team, right? Yeah. They're tied with EDG in, currently in the standings in terms of record. SKT is undefeated right now. They can topple the Kings. What I think they do is they bring Mountain and they also rely on TPs and Roams from the top lane, and they all go bottom because Anne has been just opening up the map, and you're not going to be able to power through Mar and top. You're not going to be able to kill Easy Hoon, and I think that's where you get your advantage is the bottom lane. See, I think a problem with that is that Marin is rushing the home guards early, and we saw him, even with TP down, he just reco and go home guards to the bottom lane when he can't even get back up just to see if he can get something. So I'm thinking this game is going to be a huge bloodbath in the bottom lane, yep. and it's going to come down to the jungle picks, and it's going to be either AHQ first picks the Rek'Sai, or SKT bans it, or they take it themselves, thinking that AHQ power picks another more priority pick. But I don't think that's going to happen. The Nunu was underwhelming at best. So <laughs> this is going to be a tough game for SKT. And I think all the roles are like being pointed out here, top lane and jungle specifically. I think it's really more about the mid lane. They go for the immortal with no losses yet. And I think that's the right strategy. Honestly, what we saw Easy Hoon do against more passive laners, when Wester is, for example, playing Karthus, he can even get the solo kills on the lane, which he did. And I think, you know, subbing in him, I think that's a great move. What lessons can be learned from the Fnatic game against SKT? Because they have been the closest so far to beating uh, SKT in this tournament. 
And AHQ, we've said it all along, has a pretty similar play style to Fnatic. They're willing to have very bloody games. Yeah, you have to execute the team fights around the objective control. They just don't like to let them go. They thought that they had a good team fighting composition against them, and Fnatic kept pushing the button. The thing they need to do differently is not make that slip up. We were calling out the positioning around the team fights where they weren't getting deep enough in there. The willingness to not burn flashes that Fnatic were showing with the Cassiopeia. I think that if AHQ commits super hard on their team fights and can get that advantage, SKT at some point is going to have to fight them back. I think for this matchup, when you're preparing for it and you're thinking, okay, the closest thing to a loss for SKT in this tournament was a match against Fnatic. But that is not enough of a, a uh, what do you call that? That sample size of <laughs> matches to create a good pattern from, from that game. So you need to cross-examine that one with the losses that SKT has had throughout the season and, and determine, okay, what is similar that happened before that is happening now and use that no. as the... That's impossible. You, they haven't lost on 5.5. .5. How do you do that throughout the season? <laughs> no, no, like, no, no. Like, you just can't okay, do that. They haven't lost in this match either, right? They didn't lose here, but they still showed like that was the closest thing to a loss. They have had a lot of losses and they have lost individual matches. Maybe not series, but for example, against CJ, they lost... They went five games. They had two losses in the beginning. You can see differences in their play when they win and when they lose and you can exploit that. But the hard thing is is that when they lost those games to CJ, it wasn't the Bengi plus Easy Hoon combo. It was so Tom. the preparation here and the sub comes in, it's actually a very different story. And that's actually really smart from SKT. Now you see subbing in the right people throws actually the games off because how do you research this team if they have so many different facets how they can build up their team. So I think Smart move from SKT. Well, and so let's explore that more, specifically dealing with the subs that we have here because Tom is not here. We look at Easy Hoon, and earlier we spoke about, well, what do you ban against Fake or Lulu LeBlanc? Both super, you know, high priority picks for him. Easy Hoon, though, his champion pool is just as scary, but in a different way. Do you attack it at all? Uh, probably not, unless you're with, like, a lot of the champions that Westor has can deal with some of what Easy Hoon is bringing out. You know, he picked the Fizz into Cassiopeia. I'm hoping SKT bans it out this time around. But I want to talk to you guys on the previous point as well. <laughs> you look at the wins as well, right? Some of the wins that they have had, they're not necessarily in the driver's seat the entire time. They are down by quite a bit in the beginning of the game. You don't just look at the losses of a team and say, oh, this is how you beat them. Well, you got to look at the wins. How are they winning? Did they have a perfect game? More often than not, the answer is no. You have to look at every game and then determine that what the conditions are for you to win. All right, let's go to the coach then on this one. You've watched the game so far. You've watched their games in their region during their season, but also here. If you had to poke holes at SKT, what would they be? I think that AHQ actually has the style which kind of exploits SKT's weakness, and especially HQ won against Fnatic. So I think that they do the right, and it was fire against fire, so it was kind of the same style they were going for. So what I can see is that either way this, the lanes, the solo lanes start roaming, and that's effective like Fnatic did it with Huni going mid lane, and Fnatic was, what are you doing here? Yeah. I never expected this ever to happen. So either way, the solo lanes start roaming, or the jungler do uh, really strong invades into the enemy jungle, where SKT usually feels really vulnerable. Yeah, I feel like SKT only make moves when they have information, and it's like, that's 100%. They just put it through their calculator, and they're like, all right, this is what we yeah. do. And AHQ is like, oh, well, we don't have wards there, but we're going to do it anyway. And then SKT, if they see moves like that, they might be caught off guard and be like, why would you ever do that? You don't have the information to pull that move off, but it works out for AHQ a lot of the time. All right, well, that's going to do it for, here, for us here at the desk. Now, without further ado, let's send it over to the caster booth for our last regularly scheduled group stage match. Thank you very much, guys. My name is Trevor Quickshot Henry, and I am joined by the delicious Danish dynamo of Martin Deficio Lunga and the pun master himself, David Freak Turley. <laughs> That's a much better intro. Deficio is delicious. Oh, oh I like yes. that. I like we that. are about to get into the last regularly scheduled match of the day. Before we do, let's quickly remind you guys of those rosters one last time. In this match, it is AHQ Esports Club on the blue side with Ziv in the top lane, Mountain in the jungle, West Door hopefully playing Fizz in the mid lane, and, <laughs> and Albus as the AD carry and support. And meanwhile, on the red side, it's SK Telecom T1 in the top lane. They've got Marin in the jungle is Bengi. In the mid lane is Easy Hoon. AD carry Bing and supporting is Wolf. All right, we'll have to see as we get closer to pick some bands to Fischio. 
I feel Rek'Sai is going to be a big, hotly contested yeah. pick. Bengi is a monster on that champion. What do you think? So is Mountain. So if SK Telecom does not ban it, I will almost guarantee a first pick coming in from uh, AHQ. So I feel like that should be one of the bans. Take Mountain away from that Rek'Sai. It's too important for AHQ in terms of the early snowball they like to use. And also, they play this style where Westor often goes and he split pushes. Having Rek'Sai with her global ulti is so important as well to create a big numbers advantage very, very quickly. So that should be a ban from SK Telecom. Don't risk it being first pick. And then also, I've been looking towards Westor here in terms of bans. I mean, Fizz and Zed has been two picks for him, which has been massive. I mean, Zed has obviously been banned all four games, but then the mm -hmm. Fizz, whenever he played it, if you want to stop him from roaming around and having an impact, those are the two bans you're looking for. But also keep in mind, this guy is very good at Twisted Fist.